Hello there folks and welcome back to episode 16 of the Ashes Cricket 2009 playthrough. Today we continue the first innings from ourselves in the third test match. So we played up to the 10th over in that first episode. We have simulated 20 further overs and unfortunately we have lost one further wicket. Now we finished up after 10 overs, I think at 51 for free. I think that seems to be right. Uh, the wicket of Andrew Strauss has gone since then. But Collingwood and Flint have put a nice partnership on. Um, for us by lunch to get to 125 for four. So after lunch, let's go straight back out there with the two batsmen that built up a good partnership. This has happened several times over the series so far. And uh, let's see over the next 10 or 15 hours where we can cement that partnership. But I'm well aware that uh, this series just needs to speed up a little bit. So we're not going to be playing as much now. Um, you'll notice I did skip 20 overs, but we don't need to bat or bowl everything really. That's my point. But we'll just have to see how we get on here. Obviously, the last test match was very short. Uh, Australia out within sort of the second day. But that's not going to happen here, I don't think. I hope we can survive till the end of the day today. It's going to be a little bit tricky, as soon as we're four wickets down already. But we'll give it a go. We'll give it our best shot and see if we can get a decent first innings. In a 250 or 300, I think, is what's going to be um, achievable here, I would argue. I don't think we can get much more, given that we're four wickets down already and we've lost our first four batsmen. I mean, if these two can get centuries for example uh, then we are on for a really nice uh, a really nice score but these two are really imperative in that score that's a great shot to the leg side just fancied that a little bit and we went for it and uh, a great shot there and that's the first runs of the day I'm just going to take my jumper off because it's gone a bit warm all of a sudden KP for PM well not necessarily with the score he got but a uh, good four there really nice certainly trumped the wicket keeper from Australia there and that, those are the first runs of the day for Paul Collingwood. Flint off on 36, Collingwood on 30, of course. It was really Collingwood's 190-something, 192, I think it was, 194, possibly. It was his big score that uh, won us the last match, ultimately. If he hadn't have scored that big, then we'd have been... We'd have probably been facing that second innings, really, because Australia would have probably got to the uh, total required. Again, another good shot from Collingwood. Throughout the series, he just seems really confident at the crease. So, he's the kind of player that I'm finding, bind your time with a little bit, bide your time, defend. But when the opportunities come, go for it. Because he's a really nice striker of the ball to the offside and the leg side. Uh, and he's a really good asset to having the team. And probably the player of the series so far. Ian Bell's done decently, but has flattered to deceive a little bit recently. Uh, but again, another really nice shot from Colin. We're going to take the runs where we can, ultimately. Uh, I like to think we're fairly good against spin. And from that over, just the one over after lunch, we've got 12. But uh, we played nicely and solidly. I wouldn't play, say we played stupidly for that 12. We've judged the uh, runs where we can. And uh, Collingwood moves forward another 12. So after that first over, we are 137 for four. But still getting used to this new schedule, of course. Uh, just a reminder that, of course, it is uh, Tuesdays, Fridays and Sundays now that we have Ashes Cricket 2009. All at 8pm. Uh, on Tuesday and Friday, of course, we have the... GTA uh, 4 series, the Grand Theft Auto 4 Let's Play. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure you go and check that out. Uh, and we've also got the uh, Retro Sundays, of course, on a Sunday, which I'm hoping to bring back every week from now. And we'll see how we get on there. But this series is going to be 8pm uh, on all of those days. We've, of course, the Snooker 19 contact win three times a week on a Monday, Wednesday, and a Saturday. Not the best shots here from... Uh, well, it was Flintoff, actually. It's Collingwood who's now at the crease. Flintoff uh, just ran a single. We got a no ball, hence why we got two runs out of it. The run rate, just below four and a half. Run rate, to be honest, I'm not bothered about it at the moment. Really couldn't care less about the run rate. Just need to focus on getting these two men in. And they've both got 37 and 38, respectively, so they're getting nicely comfortable at the crease. It's just making sure we don't lose another silly quick wicket. Another good shot from Collingwood there. I think the field is just about going to get there. Hasn't got the legs to go to the boundary. But we will get a double out of that quite easily. Quite comfortably there. And it's 141 for four. So, of course, that test match has started in real life. The uh, fourth test match. And it's interesting. Steve Smith, another fantastic score. Great uh, shot there from Collingwood. We'll get another two. We'll have to take a little bit of a risk. But uh, the field's taking a little bit of a while to get there. So, that's absolutely fine. No risk involved. But Steve Smith with 211, honestly. I mean, you, you just can't get the man out. If you'd have someone like him in this team, this Australia team, we'd really struggle. Really would. But we haven't had anybody who's seriously done that so far. I mean, we've had individual performers who have done half decent. That's a great shot again. I think from Collingwood it is, isn't it? Will he get to the boundary? Yes, it will. So, 
great start from Paul Collingwood. I mean, out of these two batsmen, you wouldn't expect Collingwood to be the one whacking it about. Automatically, you'd think, well, Flintoff's the one who's whacking these about. But it was Collingwood, and uh, he's on 46 off 68, so edging ever close to that 50. But finally, we do get to see a little bit of Paul Collingwood. Nathan Horitz coming into bowl. We punished him quite a bit last uh, last over. Just defend this one, though. Ooh, nasty. No run there, because if we can't get it away... There's been a few decent performers for Australia. That uh, first, it was it the first innings in the in the first match. That was really the their best innings by far. I mean, there's not, there's not been that much comparing to. There's only three other innings, and no, there was was there three other innings. Yes, there were, because Australia battered us in that second innings of the first match. But as you know, in the in the second match they played, they really weren't good at all. Particularly the main batsmen, they really let them down. We're just going to take the single run there. It's a no ball, so we might as well take the run while we can. Flintoff just getting the single. Could have been two there, possibly, with all those overthrows, but no need to take that sort of silly risk. Let's have a look at that from another two runs nonetheless, and effectively no further ball face, but Collingwood seems to be really comfortable at the crease. Flintoff's not so much. But every ball doesn't have to go to the boundary, so like that one, we will defend the odd one. I think our batting's a lot better than it was back in the day when we started this series. But the opener's still not getting off to a start. I mean, Strauss got his personal best for the for the series so far. I think it was 33 he got out for earlier. Which, yeah, is a decent score in itself. But for an opener like uh, Strauss, it's not really that great. One ball left of the over, though. Collingwood's not really attacked this over. I don't really blame him. We do have a little bit of a chance here to potentially play a leg side shot. Good shot. Just the single, I think, just because of the speed and where the field is placed. So they avoid a boundary and another single, and that puts Collingwood back in for the next over. I'm just fiddling around with the telly settings here just to try and get a, a decent light on this. It's either too bright or too low. We can't seem to get a middle ground. But anyway, uh, it'll be Collingwood who faces the next over again. He seems to just be batting better, and that's a lot of spice on the offside. And he's bringing the classic bouncer back. You know, we love these bouncers. And that's why Collingwood, a great shot from the first ball of the over. And he gets another 50. A great Ashes series so far. Real, a real asset to the team as Flintoff, but, uh, sorry, as Collingwood being. That's definitely two 50s. Obviously had that big score. He might have got another 50 at some point. I like to really get some stats going for this series, but uh, I don't quite know. There's another bouncer coming up here. I know we played too many of these in the, the last game. Uh, the last in it, well, last episode rather. And uh, we didn't get away with it. But this time, my God, have we got away with it. But uh, as they say there, I think that's Agus said, he's certainly not hanging about, and that's exactly right. On his 50 and now at 55. I don't know what Siddle's trying to achieve here. I have a feeling it might be a, quite a quick spell. They avoid the boundary, though, this time. Go for the two, which we'll get. And we'll take the runs when we can get them. Again, it's not a one day and the run rate doesn't matter. But if they keep bowling bounce and we know we can do well out of them, then what's the point of defending? That's a bit of a fuller length ball. We've already got 10 from the over, of course. So no need to start attacking this particularly now. Just keep the wicket. Don't get too mad. We did, did go a little bit mad in that uh, first episode of the innings. That was probably why we, we were uh, out with three of our batsmen quite cheap. Cook gone really cheap. That was really down to Strauss running him out. But that sort of thing happens sometimes. But Bell going really cheap, as did Peterson. So the onus is on these two batsmen really to perform. Because there's not really much depth below them. I know we've got, I know we joke about it. We side Bottom and Anderson. They can get runs. But it shouldn't really be on them. It should be these two uh, and the guys above them. But they only managed to get 52 between themselves. But I hope that both of these two will get 52. Uh, Individually, which of course Collingwood's already got. Marcus North now coming into bowl, which is an interesting development. After Horitz came in and got battered a little bit. But that has hit Flint off. But uh, not interested. Yeah, wide of, uh, wide of off stumps. He's coming around the wicket now. It's probably better for us. I'm a little bit comfortable, more comfortable with that. Good shot. Great shot from Flint off. We can really judge spin well. Which begs the question, why on earth they keep bowling spin? 
unless the fast bowlers keep bowling bouncers, we're not really punishing them that much. But the the spinners, they just keep well, they keep flirting, and we just keep going all right then. But uh, he's coming back round the other way this time. The orthodox route. That's a nice defensive shot, if ever there was one. Getting it right out of the crease, making sure it's nowhere near the stumps. But the run rate, of course, increasing gradually to 4.75 now. So nearly at 5 and over. Again, we've got no aims in terms of run rate, but just to get runs where we can. But this is turned into a very nice partnership for that fifth wicket. Which the English batsman can't really seem to put on at the moment in real life. That's a great shot. That is a great shot. Even when we take a risk and hit one like that, you know, we could miss time that and it goes straight to the stumps. You've got to take those risks or sometimes. You can't be that negative. But we seem to hit it really cleanly down the ground and there's no fielder there. And within a matter of seconds, it's gone to the boundary. Again, another four. And Flintoff just needs another one of them for his uh, half century. But we're not worrying about that just at the moment. Let's just defend this. Decent defensive shot. And uh, we are flying after these five overs. Absolutely flying. 57 for Collingwood, 46 uh, for Flintoff. What is uh, the partnership then? Uh, I'm sure you have Fall of Wicket somewhere, but I can't seem to find it. It probably will be on the stats screen. Let's have a look. Uh, scorecard and graphs. Stats and graph partnerships. There we go. 112 the partnership between Collingwood and Flintoff already. I mean, look at that. 15, 23, 13, 5 between Strauss and Collingwood. But uh, it's clear that these two are really getting on with it. It's great to see. Another bouncer. Again, we'll go for it. It's not going to quite get to the boundary this time, unfortunately. So, they have got Collingwood off strike, the danger man. But I'd argue Flintoff's just as much a danger man as anybody else. But if they keep bringing these bounces, we will punish them. Try a little bit of a straighter drive, and driving. that's a beautiful shot from the side of the bat. And Collingwood, well... He was supposedly the danger man. They've got him off strike, but there's another danger man at the other end. Flintoff gets to his 50. And uh, both of these bats were now comfortably into the 50s. What a great shot this was by Flintoff. Right down the line. A real whack of a speed. The fielders, unless they're already down there, just aren't going to catch that. And five off the over already. Another bouncer, though. He, he's not learning. He really isn't learning his, uh, his Peter Siddle. And that is a beautiful shot. Way down the right-hand side. We went for it. We weren't a mug. We just blasted that. And if anybody can hit a six out the ground, it's Andrew Flintoff. And look at that. Freddie Flintoff. It's whacked out of the ground. And what we're going to try and do now is just make sure, infuriate these bowlers. Really annoy them. Take every run we can get. And make sure we keep these batsmen in. They've now stopped the, the, uh, the bouncer brigade, brigade, which I don't really understand. Because if you're bowling three bounces effectively, he's just given 11 runs away. Now you're bowling full length. What's the point? Might as well just bowl full length throughout the over. That's what I don't get. I mean, bowlers like Joffre Archer bowl way too many bounces. End of the day, the bouncer is for a variation. Bowl it full most of the time. Put the batsman under pressure. Because with a bouncer, most of the time, you just leave it. Another nice shot there from Flintoff. We'll just run just in case. But I think this has got the legs as it has. Another boundary there. And Pete Siddle has been mugged on that over. Well and truly mugged. But ball full length most of the time. We bounce as most of the time. Batsmen can just leave it. We don't because we know we've got a great opportunity to just have a swing at it. And, and get the runs from it. But it seems peculiar that Joffrey Archer is bowling so many bounces. I mean he's had success so far. He did bring Steve Smith out for a match. And that whether you believe it or not, potentially led us to win the match in the third test match in real life. With Smith, they'd have probably got a much higher total. They probably would have forced Stokes and Leach to put another... Oh dear, get back, get back. That's the first bad shot we've played all day. Really is. The first poor shot we've played all day. I think this is... Uh, is it Collingwood on strike or Flintoff? Just in the air. And uh, he's got been dropped. It's Collingwood on strike. Yeah, a bit of a poor shot there from Collingwood, but we're okay. Because we just follow up with that. Again, we just need to show these bowlers that we're not worried. We're not scared of them at all. 
which is what in real life the batsmen seem to be a little bit they're like oh dear here comes a fast bowler or a spinner and you just get a bit tense when Nathan Lyon comes in and it's Rory Burns and Joe Denley and you're thinking oh god here we go decent shot again though down the ground not going to quite get to the boundary I don't think this fielder will get it quite easily it hadn't quite got the legs of the previous shot not hit as well but again another two there two more runs there this could be a half decent one day score if uh, we keep going like this. But these two batsmen seriously are the difference between this being a great innings. Oh dear. Just dropped again but another single. Did it carry? I don't think it carried this time so I think we were okay. There you go. I fancied it. That's why I stayed quiet then. I didn't want to seem stupid. But there's too much room on that leg side. They flirt with us going up there. There's no real risk we playing that. Because if we play that and it goes low. I mean, look at the wicketkeeper there. I think if that was in real life, he'd have knocked over the bales completely. Look at him having a jump. I mean, even if that went wrong, there's no fielder out there to, to catch it. So there's not really much risk involved. But another six from Flintoff. We haven't seen many of them so far. And with that shot, just outside the line of the off stump, it's 200 up. Really good scoring from these seven overs. Can't remember what we started at. Was it about 120 or something? We've uh, really gone for it these last seven overs. And crucially, we've uh, kept both wickets. 204, uh, 201 for four. About half an hour after we've come out for lunch. Seven overs in. A little bit fuller length now. We're just going to leave this one. Doesn't matter. Again, we've had our runs now. If they start bowling a little bit more aggressively, we don't have to keep running. We don't have to keep the run rate ticking at all. Oh, no. Ah, that's a shame. I just said we could defend a little. Ah, it's really annoying. Poor Collingwood gone for 68. Great catch. On the leg side from Nathan Horitz. And uh, that's a real shame. 65 he's gone for apologies. But that's a real shame. We've got a real good partnership going. And uh, yeah, Pete still gets a wicket. And Matt Pryor's in. That's really gutting. But we just changed a knee-jerk reaction. I thought, no, we're going to get more to the leg side. Nathan Horitz was there. And uh, a good catch from him. That's a real disappointment. Shame for Collingwood. But a good innings nonetheless. Uh, it really proves why he's been one of the best uh, batsmen. In this Ashes series. But the uh, the partnership has been broken by Peter Siddle. I don't know if that will make too much difference. Flintoff still going to go at it the same. Just need to make sure we don't lose two quick wickets now. But with Matt Pryor coming in. Flintoff has to be the main focal point of this innings really now. It's a good shot from Pryor. But we won't take anything from it. Of course we want Flintoff uh, batting next over. So there's no point going for a single. Because all we'd have to do is get pressure on. There's no, not really much room. They've organised themselves a lot better under this Peter Siddle over. Particularly that uh, fills the leg side. Oh, well, I said I wasn't going to go for it. But I thought we might have had the legs to get two there. Well, that's that's a brilliant direct hit. But albeit, it's uh, a single. So Matt Pryor back on strike for the next over. Marcus North back in with some off spin. It's a good shot from Matt Pryor. They keep flirting. Really do keep flirting with that offside. And every time they do, we keep saying, well, have it then. We'll just play the drive straight. Uh, fairly nice degree angle, basically. And there's no one out there. So we'll keep taking it on. A little bit tricky, of course, when they come this uh, side round the wicket. Again, another good shot, but straight to the field at that time. No problem with that. I mean, Matt Pryor's not a mug. He's a good batsman. Always has been. But Flintoff has to be the vocal point for this innings, which I think is more than understandable. The ball just runs out. Oh, we've been caught again with that. Two quick wickets. Ah, we've been caught just playing an attacking shot, flirting with it a little bit further up in the air. And we've gone for 201 for four to 206 for six. Matt Pryor really cut short there in his innings. And we're going to bring Ryan Sidebottom in. Just to try and steady the ship. Some very good scores so far. 
240 odd scores. And out of all the batsmen left, he's, he's the one I truly believe in, to be honest, to just get on with this. Give, uh, oh, well, hang on. No, not interested. What's this looking like? No, it's way outside. Off stump. If there's anybody I'm confident, comfortable in, in giving Flint off the support he needs, it's side bottom. But we need to make sure we just don't lose another quick wicket. Get side bottom off strike. Make sure that Flintoff steadies the ship. That's a real shock. Matt Pryor gone cheap and Collingwood gone all within two overs, really. And uh, that's really damaging for us. Good shot, though. Good shot from side bottom. He'll get off the mark. And we'll get two. And uh, most importantly, Flintoff back on strike for the next over. He bats really well, does Ryan side bottom. No fear in that crease. As you can see, Collingwood gone for 65. Matt Pryor, really quick innings there. But uh, Ryan side bottom is effectively as a night watchman. I know it's only 2 o'clock, but uh, effectively is that at Edge Baston. Because we want Flintoff to now take the take the reins. I'd say that our potential's really been dropped by this uh, by this happening now. But uh, don't mug with Flintoff. Don't play with Flintoff. Don't keep putting bounces to him because that's, that's exactly what he'll do. And I've realised we might be on limited time with this innings. Ultimately, side bottom, broad, swan and Jimmy haven't really got the legs to last till the end of the day. So Flintoff needs to get on with it, if we want a decent innings, that is. We wanted about 250 or 300. And uh, keep playing these the way we are. I'm going to get to that a lot quicker than we would have done just by defending and playing the odd single. But I don't know what Pid Siddle's doing. Fair enough, he got a wicket last over, but... He's considering a ridiculous amount of runs from these bouncers. One might go wrong, we might get out. I accept that. Lovely shot. That's a little bit shorter. But no, over the boundary again. No problem with that. It was in the air. We're flirting with danger a bit. But just from those three balls, we've scored 12. And uh, the partnership is already 14 between these two. Yep, they've finally learned. Finally. Oh, dear. Another great shot from Flintoff. Fuller length, but it doesn't matter. 16 off the over. I just have a bit of a sneaky feeling Peter Siddle won't be in for the next one. And again, and again. Again, it's silly. There's no fielder out there. We've got a boundary from every single ball this over. Well, unbelievable. So what I think we'll do today, be a little bit of a longer one, we'll do 15 overs, so we'll do another 5 overs after this one. Another, oh, it won't quite be a boundary this time, just the single we'll go for. Get uh, Andy Flintoff back on strike. We'll do another 5 overs, and then I think we'll simulate the rest of the innings, just to get Australia in for the next, uh, for the next episode. See if we can get Flintoff his 100, most importantly. Mitchell Johnson coming in now then. Good shot. Might should be the single. No, I think we've got the legs to get two. Yeah, definitely. No problem with that. Might have even got three if we were being really aggressive. But 26 just scored off six off seven balls. That's why Flintoff has shot all the way up to 93. We're on a mission here. First stop ball for a bit. And side bottom could become a bit of a Jack Leach figure here. The ball just runs out and... Or maybe not. Or maybe not. Well, we were on borrowed time a little bit. I don't really know why we didn't start defending, but you get greedy. You do get greedy. And there was one shot that was bound to go wrong. A little bit of a poor shot. And a great catch from the Aussie fielder, no doubt about that. And uh, we are really down to the last few bats for now. We're going to bring Graham Swan in, uh, and then Broad and Anderson can bowl, uh, can bat last. But uh, that's not great for us, really not great. But a dramatic episode, nonetheless. We've lost three wickets. We just need to get on with scoring now. Well, this is becoming a bit of a calamity now. Graham Swan gone, first ball. Ah. I was just hoping this would be the first of those first innings in this series so far that didn't go wrong. 
that this one really has. Particularly to go 201 for 4 to 231 for 8. Bearing in mind that Flintoff scored all of those runs. Prior 5, Swan none. Just uh, leave those last two balls. Give side bottom a little bit of a chance. As I've said, just the last four overs. Have a swing at it now. Uh, and then we'll just simulate the rest of the innings. Oh, bottom edge. You just got to have a swing at this point. There's only two wickets in hand. We know these two can't really last the distance. Again, another bounce. This is so tempting. Another bottom edge. Hasn't quite got the... Of course, he hasn't got the finesse of somebody like Flintoff. That's completely understandable. That's a decent shot, though. We'll take the single there. Hoping for a little bit more than that. But nonetheless, uh, we got at least a single. Great to see the overthrows in this, this game. I don't think we've had that in some future games. Stuart Broad, eh? Stuart Broad. Who would have thought? Hey, hey, hello. Lifts it over the infield. Boundary. Not a bad way to start your innings, Stu. As I said, these two just got to get on with it now. Got to get scoring. Another perfect shot. Is that going to go all the way? Not quite. Just a four. We'll take it though nonetheless. We aimed for 250 or 300 from this first innings. And if we keep getting boundaries, we'll get there nice and quick. Last ball of the over. Another bouncer. That's a real short bouncer. That's a real short bouncer. Doesn't carry amazingly. What it might have done to that fielder. I thought it would have been out. So that really trumped us, that did. But 2-4-1 for 8. A little bit of a embarrassment for the second half of the field. Ultimately, it's just been Flintoff and Collingwood that have carried the team. But let's see how these uh, two batsmen can do now. Good shot. We'll go for a single. It's amazing that these uh, innings are over so quickly. Just the nature of all cricket games. They never seem to get it right with these five-day tests. With a run rate or anything, really. So, that's just how it plays. Get another single. Could have got two there if we were being really greedy. But again, we might as well try and get these two wickets in hand. You don't take the risks if you've just got one wicket left. That's a bouncer, goodness me. Top edge. Doesn't carry. What an episode, eh? Probably scored 120 odd runs, but got four wickets. Apologies, guys. You might have heard the phone go off just then. We're just going to face this now. It comes a little bit tricky. We've literally got two seconds to decide what we're going to play, but we defended that adequately anyway. Yeah, the phone just went off there. I do like to keep it on loudspeaker just to make sure if anybody calls that uh, I can get to it. I am home alone, so. Is there anything urgent? I'll get it. But that is a great shot there. I've got that out of sync. I don't even know who it is. I think it. Oh, I don't even know who it is, but it's gone to the boundary nonetheless. Great shot. It was a no ball. Uh, it looks well. It could be either of them, to be honest. Let's find out. It's Brody. Brody really getting off here. 14 so far. I said I was expecting side bottom to lead this a little bit. But it's Stuart Broad. And this could be another few runs here. Not quite a boundary, but this will bring the 250 up. We're going to get for free here. That's a danger. That's a danger. That's a real danger. Has Stuart Broad just got away with it? I think he might have just got in. He might have just got in, you know. They bowled it to the right end. Has he just got in? He went for the drop there. That's why I thought, right, we're going to go for another one. Had that sinking feeling. He was only about halfway down. Has he got him out? Yeah, he's gone. Stuart Broad's gone. That's a shame. A quick, uh, quick innings, but... An influential one. It gets us to 250. And the last man in, Jimmy Anderson. A little bit of a shame, that. But what can you really do? So, as I said, we're just going to do the two more overs. Great shot again. That should get to the boundary, though, this time from side bottom. Yep, it's got the legs. It gets there nicely. 
And then uh, on Sunday's episode, we'll see the start of the Australia innings. But I think for a change, we're not going to have that start of the innings. Because you have the start of the innings way too often, really. That's a, a bouncer. Ooh, bottom edge. Uh, I'll simulate about probably about 15 to 20 overs into that Australian innings. And then... Uh, and then bowl. Because we have had quite a few of the kind of start of innings, end of innings. We haven't really had that that mid-innings sort of uh, thing. It's a bit hard when the innings are as, so, as, uh, as short as this. But, uh, yeah, well, that's what we'll do in the next episode. So simulate about 15 or 20 overs. Uh, and then come into it about that time in. Great shot. Has it got the legs to go all the way from side bottom? It was close. No, not quite. Let's have a look at this. It was bloody fairly close to there, I'm certain. It was literally nestled right on the boundary. Oh, I couldn't really see from that angle. That's a little bit of a shame. Another bouncer. We might as well go for it at bottom edge, though, that time. A little bit mistimed. But we might as well have a whack. It's Anderson, who's it? Oh, it's Anderson, is it? Was it Anderson who hit that four? Must have been. Another bottom edge. Again, doesn't matter at this point. We've just got to have a whack. We've really just got to have a whack. We're not going to get that many more runs by every run, as proven by the last match. And as proven in real life, of course. Just narrowly winning by that one wicket. Every single run matters. One more over left, though, till we simulate the S to the innings. Again, we haven't worked as a team here. It's been Collingwood and Flintoff that have got all the runs. If they hadn't have been out so cheap, we'd have probably got four or five hundred, I'd say. But, but that just proves that the owner shouldn't be on them. There's 11 batsmen. Okay, you can kind of excuse the last three or four because they're bowlers. That being uh, Broad Swan, Side Botman, Anderson. But you can't excuse, especially the openers. I know that we made a mistake. We played a little bit aggressively. Uh, Bell, Peterson and Cook gone cheap. But regardless, it shouldn't be down to... Two middle-order batsmen to sort things out. That could be close again. We're playing with fire here, but he's took too long to get it, and I think that's absolutely fine. You know what we're going to do here, don't you? Go on, over the infield. Lovely. Bounce, 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 bounce. Another boundary from Anderson. These two have been a real treat to watch. Really have. In all of the innings so far, they've come in when it's time to attack, time to get as many runs as possible. And that's exactly what they've done. Well, that's, that's a great good. shot. That's an awesome shot from Anderson. They, yeah, they could teach the openers a thing or two, really. I oh, know there's not the pressure on them because they can just have a swing. If they lose their wicket, oh well. But these two have a swing and they're successful most of the time. Again, a 40 score from... Side bottom, you will remember. It's an inside edge, doesn't really matter. And these two score really nicely. This is the last ball of orange before we simulate the rest. So we might as well have a swing. There we go. What a way to end it. That's going to go for six. That's gone for six, ladies and gents. Well, it can't really get much better than that. So I think we might as well end there. Jimmy Anderson getting a six. You ain't going to get better than that. There is no way you can get better than that. And that's where we're going to end. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. After 45 overs with 277 for 9. We're going to simulate to see if we get any more than that. I mean, Jimmy Anderson, the fourth highest scoring batsman. That just proves the pudding. But let's see how many more I get. And funnily enough, it was that over. It was side bottom that went uh, for 13. Just bowled. Clean bowled by Hilton House. And that is it for the innings. But... Regardless, a much better first innings than there have been so far. We got 120 in that first test match. Australia got about 130 odd in that second test match. Uh, so a good first innings. But this match again seems to be one that's going to be very, very quick. So Australia will come in uh, straight away really. Uh, about 3 o'clock, see how they get on. Uh, we'll simulate about 20 overs and then come into bowl and see how we get on. So thank you very much for your company folks. I've been TIJ Gamer and until the next time. I will see you guys later on. Goodbye for now.